in this video I'm going to show you best and fastest way to apply special effects to your pictures using a Photoshop plugin. So let's get started. What's up guys, Thrill here back with another video and as you saw in the introduction, in this video we will be taking a look at a plugin. Now if you know from my previous tutorials, you know that I don't use Photoshop plugins that often. However, it is something that I always wanted to introduce you to guys because a plugin, regardless of whatever plugin you use, can be a really big benefit to your work process and can make your life a lot easier and work process a lot faster. So the plugin we are going to use in this video specifically is Boris FX Optics. So before they used to focus more on video side of things and they have visual effects softwares which are used in many big movies and TV shows. However, recently they are also bringing same visual effects in photo editing space via their plugin Optics. So let's check it out. So to understand Optics in detail, let's recreate this Thor poster. If you look at my layer panel, it's literally just one filter and everything is included in that. I've applied nothing else from Photoshop. Now let's go to the document. So here, as you can see, I already have the photo open. Now, just like any other filter, I will right click here and I will select convert to smart object. And then I'm just gonna make a copy because it's my Photoshop tradition. And like, <laughs> I, I have to make a copy. Uh, and then, uh, let's start applying the effects. Uh, I'm going to go to filter, Boris FX, and I will click on optics 2022. So here it's asking me if I want to apply the filters from the previous file and I'm going to say no so that we can create something fresh. So it's no. And if you take a look, we have few things here. So here are all of your filters and they have different categories like color. You can apply different types of colors and whatnot. There is a diffusion and blur. So there's like a directional blur that you can apply like a depth of field and center spot blurs and one thing in the blur category by the way that i like is how the motion blur is so easy to manage if you know in the photoshop mo applying motion blur can be fairly annoying but here it's pretty good so let's get to the cool stuff i know you're all waiting for the lightning so just letting you know that there are like a lot of different things that you can do here but let's start with the render category. I know this one will be pretty interesting for you guys. So here they have like a different kinds of effects that they are generating right now in the software that you can manipulate. And another thing that you notice that because let's say I clicked on this laser beam here, there is like even more variation of laser beams here in the presets. So basically there's this variation, this variation and so many different versions that you can create. So here you have another like dusty cellar light. And then it doesn't end here. You can now go to your parameters here, as you can see on the right. And here you have all the options to change things. So let's select this red down, right? Now here, now you can uh, just shift it around up and down, or you can go here in the colors. And in the color, I can just go ahead and make it green or something else and whatever I like. You can mess with the brightness or the softness and every single effect has this much freedom. So what I want to use is this called uh, Zap. It's basically lightning effect and there in the lightning, of course, there are many different lighting effects that you can use. So for me, I'm going to use the default one because I want to keep things simple. I want to like, introduce you properly to the plugin. Now here in the lighting, as you can see, we have multiple points that we can use to adjust it around, like exactly where we want to place it. So of course, I want to make it look like that it's uh, striking from above and hitting directly on his hammer. And now in the parameters, as you can see, we have many options. So first, I'm going to add another bolt. So I'm going to add two bolts. So, you know, two is better than one. You can also go ahead and change, for example, like the width of the bolt, and then you can vary the width. So it's like a thick on some side and thinner on the other side. So right now it of course doesn't look good, uh, but to make it look nice, I'm gonna keep it to the 10. That works perfect for this photo. And then here's like a random seed. So basically you can mess it around and it will basically keep adding different variation to the light. So here uh, for me, 0 0.44 works perfect. So for my amp, I'm going to keep it to 0 0.96 and the curvature is going to be 0 0.23. 
the branchiness i want a bit more of it so i'm gonna make it to 2.38 so basically it adds more branches you can add or remove as many branches as you want and the branch angle so basically right now i feel they're going way too far and i want it centered so i'm gonna change it to something like 13 so they're more concentrated the branch length is completely fine uh, but still you can go ahead and change it to whatever you like the glow bright I'm gonna make it 2.80 So it's basically making the glow a little bit brighter nothing else and of course for the color We will uh, select the cyanish color that is more accurate to the Thor Let's keep it a little bit down Not only that but if I go here and I open this option we can do so much manipulation with glow itself so first I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna keep it 56 and the rest is going to be pretty much the same. The length I'm gonna actually make it uh, 0.80. So I just basically reduced the length of the uh, lightning and then I manually brought it down a little bit. There is no like a special reason behind it. It's just for me when I was working, uh, this added the most attractive look uh, that I was looking for. Nothing, there's nothing crazy reason behind it <laughs> but this way this is the exact look that how i achieve and if you want to see a clear look you can always uh, turn off the uh, indicators and controls so you can clearly see what you are actually creating uh, from here so that's one thing now this is a good time for me to explain the layer panel so basically it's kind of similar to photoshop so here, this button is basically if you want to turn on and off your effect to see how is it going. And here, this button is basically an add layer. So when you click on it, it will add another layer on the top. And right now, as you can see, this one just says current, means it doesn't have any effect applied on it. So now if I go to my light options here, let's make it a little bit bigger. So in the lights, as you can see, we have so many different options. To create lighting effects and all of them have their own uh, sub categories uh, where you can go ahead and keep creating crazy stuff so here I'm gonna go and select the classic lens flare everyone loves lens flares there's so many different categories just look at here it's like there's no end to it and every single lens flare has this many customization option so it's like endless lens flare barrage <laughs> Uh, so for uh, simplicity of this tutorial and it's the first time I'm introducing it I'm gonna just use the default one and I'll take this and as you can see there is a handle that I can use to manipulate it and I can see it live on the photo by the way you can't do that in the Photoshop lens flares uh, you have to apply it then you change the blend mode and you know one thing that you can do is that I don't want this all of this flare and stuff. So here you just go ahead in your other options in the parameters and you turn it off. And then I just go to the color options here and I again pick the nice cyan color that works perfect for the Thor. Uh, so here I'm gonna go and keep it a bit desaturated. Hit OK. And then I'm gonna go and change the scale of this to 350. On the other hand, in my hotspot, I'll make it 1.04. So it's just a little bit more intense. Then in the ray thickness, I'm gonna go and make it 1.50. So again, a little bit more brightness uh, and it kind of uh, makes the impact more intense, you know? And as always, to check how it looks, you can just turn off your controls. So it shows you how, it's look, how it looks right now. So as you can see, the glow is nice, but it still feels a bit um, like a too uh, strong. So in the ray brightness, I will reduce it a little bit. And then you also have like the blind mode option. So here you can have only flare or you can uh, have a screen mode, which is the one we were looking at. And this is the ad. So for me, I want to keep it to the ad uh, because it gives me the nicest blending for this photo. Uh, and then in the ray brightness, let's keep it down even a little bit more. Maybe keep it zero. Yes, actually, surprisingly, that looks perfect. So, uh, so far we have seen like a light category and we have seen the render category. Now, let's go to the particle illusion. So here you can see that we have different types of particle systems. And before doing applying anything, I'm going to go and create a copy. So now we have zap on one layer, lens flare on a layer, and now we have another new layer. 
So here I can now go now apply whatever I want. So as you can see, there's so many different effects and everything with its own controls. So I'm gonna take this and I will put it here. The color is surprisingly perfect, the default color, so we don't need to change anything, but the intensity is too much. So first I'm gonna go to my world transformation here in the parameters. And then I'm gonna go and reduce the scale on the X axis. So it's like a more concentrated light right on top of him. And then in the particle properties, uh, I can reduce the life. So it's like a less intense, even in that regard. So maybe 60 looks fine. So this is there, but I still want it to be more subtle. That's why we have this uh, opacity, just like Photoshop, the layers here have opacity option. So here in the opacity, I'm gonna go ahead and make it to like a 40%-ish. Okay, so the final is 45. Then, uh, as you saw, we have more particles. Uh, so I'm gonna make another copy and I'm gonna select this one, this emitters. And here again, we have multiple sub variation of that and you can pick anything you like. So I'm gonna select this one because it's a bit minimal. Then I'll go to my composite and here we have tint color. So in the tint, uh, I'm gonna go and make it something nice and and then hit okay. So at this point it's not strong enough, but if I go and make the tint 100, now it's more blue. And then you can again go back and adjust the color until it matches the nicely, uh, matches nicely in the photo. So then hit okay. Now I'm gonna take this and put it a little bit here like this. So now I'm gonna go and uh, go to my world transform and again scale the X a little bit. Cool. But still, I feel that there are like too many particles, right? So if I go here, there you have multiple different types of masks. So for right now, we're just gonna use the paint mask, which is basically like a traditional Photoshop mask. So if you wanna invert your mask, you can go and click on this button. So it will invert everything just with this one button. So let's keep it here. And then you can again use your bracket keys, just like in Photoshop to make your brush bigger and here you have your brush options. So here you can make it uh, harder, softer, or you, here you can manipulate the opacity. So I want full opacity and like a softest brush possible. And unlike Photoshop, here we don't need to paint with like a black or white colors. Here it's more like a left click and right click. So if I paint with my left click, you can see that it's erasing the particles. But then if I change now to my right click and I paint, it comes back. And then I'm gonna reduce the opacity to like uh, 40, 30% and then paint in the middle. So let's make the photo a little bit bigger. So this is what it looks right now with all the special effects. And we are done with the applying the effects. However, I feel that we need to do some more color correction. And the thing is you can do that right in here in optics. So let me show you. Uh, just like the last time, I'm gonna go and create another copy. Uh, so now we can apply new effects here. And then here you have like your color options. So if you look here, we also have another option of grades and tints where you have many different ways to color correct or sorry, to add color grading on top of your photo. So for me, I'm gonna use this dual gradient option. And in the dual gradient, we have the classic blue and orange. But instead of proper blue, we will make it a bit of a cyan because that's the color of Thor's lighting. And also for the orange, I'm gonna go and change it a little bit. So I'm basically making it a little bit desaturated and then hit okay. Now I'm gonna go into the opacity and make it, let's say 40%, so it's not too strong. So if I turn it on and off, now we have a subtle color grading on top. So let's make it 60, so it's a bit more visible. And because I'm happy with everything, I'm done. I'm gonna go and click on this apply button. And there you go. If I turn it on and off, as you can see, this is where we started and this is what we created. All in all done just using optics, a single plugin. And now let's look at some more examples. Like look at this photo of mountain. I basically went into the optics and I applied some uh, lighting effects. Uh, so they have this Aurora filter that you can mess around with and create this really beautiful landscapes or 
uh, I also created this metrics inspired shootout. So I found this photo and I was like, okay, that's basically uh, uh, Morbius and Trinity fighting together. And now it looks like they're doing some shootout with futuristic guns. And Boris FX is providing a 15 day free trial. If you decide to make a purchase, they're providing 20% discount to all the Tutorial Junction subscribers. All you have to do is use this special discount code that you see on the screen. I will also put it in the comment and description if you want to copy paste it. So use this code to get 20% discount in case you decide to make a purchase. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, ask me in comment section below. Till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.